So the key thing that you need to understand is that if you've got mold and condensation problems in your home, what is leading to those problems ultimately is moisture. And this time of year, when it gets cold, when we start to seal up all of our windows, we might start to take more hot showers and baths to warm ourselves up. We're probably cooking more as well. What we're doing is creating more moisture and giving it fewer ways to get out of your home. Now, I think it's really, really important in order to manage this, to understand how, when, and how much moisture you're creating, which is why I've got my trusty bucket here. So this example is for a family of five with no pets other than some fish, and I'm generally rounding the amounts up to emphasize the point. But it's quite possible that overnight, through our breath and sweat, we have generated up to one litre of moisture each. So that's one litre of airborne moisture. Now, I've got a 12 litre bucket here, so we're going to start the day with our five litres already in our bucket of that moisture. So once everyone's sprung out of bed or perhaps rolled out or been shoved out or dragged out, depending which member of the family we're talking about, next up is on an average day, a shower for everyone. Five powerful showers of around 10 minutes could create upward of 400 litres of water. Now, while a lot of this will go down the drain, it can generate more than eight litres of moisture in the air. So we're gonna add another eight to 10 litres to our bucket. So our bucket is now almost overflowing and we haven't even made it downstairs yet. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna have to, whoa, try not to spill it everywhere and get another bucket. So now we've got 24 litres capacity in total. Let's see what's next. So we've got 12 litres of moisture already airborne in our home. And now we're gonna come downstairs and inevitably probably make a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a few drinks, perhaps boil an egg, a bit of breakfast. And that's gonna be another two, three, or even four litres. So next up on the daily regime is usually some washing, sadly, I'd love not to do it every day, but we have to. And that's gonna add another two to four liters, particularly if you're then drying that washing indoors, that's gonna put even more moisture into your house. So let's add that to our bucket. Now we're probably gonna add further to this throughout the day. For example, one of my children might have a bath later on, we'll be cooking again, we might do more washing. There's various activities that are gonna to continue to add to it. But actually, if you stop and think about this for a moment, if you've created that much moisture in your home, that needs somewhere to go. And this is the big mistake that a lot of people make. And this is the thing that I really found it quite hard to get my head around when we were trying to control the moisture and the condensation problem in our home. And that was that you've got to open your windows. It can be really hard to bring yourself to do this when you're paying to heat your home because you don't want to let all that nice, expensive heat out, but mold loves humid, poorly ventilated spaces. So if you don't open the window and moisture builds up, it creates the perfect breeding ground for mold spores, leading to black mold on walls and ceilings and even health problems like asthma, allergies and other respiratory issues. So we now have like a daily regime where after the showers, we always open our windows and we just let that moisture out. And it makes so much difference when you start to measure the humidity levels, you realize those simple little things can really change stuff. But if you're doing all of these activities and then your home is sealed shut, that moisture, even if you're heating your home, that moisture is just gonna be floating around. And don't forget, this is every day that you're adding this. It's not just once a week, it's every day. It's gonna find those cold spots somewhere behind the wardrobe, in a corner. It's gonna find cold spots and it's gonna to start to gather there and that mold is gonna to start to grow and you're gonna get that condensation and it's not going to be nice. Now, there's some other things you can do, of course, to help with all of this. As soon as you start cooking or boiling a kettle, put an extractor fan on, have a good, powerful extractor fan in your bar 
bathroom or your shower room and use that when you're having a shower or bath. But a lot of the time, unfortunately, these take care of part of the problem, but not all of it. Put lids on when you're cooking, that really helps as well. So the point that I really want to make here is that it's probably not even 10 a.m. in the morning and we're looking here at about 19 to 20 litres of water is now potentially airborne in your home looking for somewhere to go. And if you're not opening windows, if you don't have extraction, if you don't have trickle vents, if you don't have ways for that moisture to escape, maybe a dehumidifier, we'll talk about that in a moment. If there's none of those measures there and you've just got this airtight home, it is gonna find the cold spots. Even if you're heating your home somewhere, there will be cold spots where this moisture would like to go and it would like to sit there and then it's gonna create mold and it's gonna play havoc in your home. And the thing about having showers and things in the morning, I mean, the key point here is we've generated a lot of moisture quite early on in the morning. So we can actually open some windows and get rid of that quite easily. It means we don't have to have our windows open all day. But one of the big things that people don't think about and they don't see because you can't see it, so it's hard to visualize it, is when you're then drying clothes and washing in your home. So throughout the day, that might be sitting on those areas and it's getting lovely and dry and it's fresh and it's brilliant and you put it all away, but all of the moisture, those liters of moisture that were in, that, in those clothes, in those garments, and then floating around your house. And that's happening insidiously throughout the day. So it's more difficult to control because you don't necessarily want to have a window open all day when you're, when you're drying those. They are, the moisture is escaping more slowly. Whereas obviously when you're cooking, you can put an extractor fan on, you can put a lid on a pan. So some activi activities are easier to control, but washing is a really, really tricky one. So if you've got mold and condensation in your home, really think about how you're drying washing. Obviously not everyone's got space or the money for a tumble dryer. You can't dry your washing outside when it's too cold, but at least think about trying to do that in a controlled space. Maybe dry it in the bathroom if you've got an extractor fan there and you can be extracting that, that moisture at the same time. Consider a dehumidifier, they do work brilliantly, but make sure you're then putting that where you're drying those clothes so that it is dealing with the problem at source. That's much better than letting that moisture then float off to go and find the, the place where it's gonna cause the problems. So I just hope that this helps you because it really helped me and I promise you, the situation is so much better in our home. I think if you live in a home that is a little bit prone to, to mold, it's always a battle that you're fighting, right? But now that I think about it, this time of year when we're shutting those windows, when it's getting colder and I just think, every morning, oh my goodness, this, this is in our home, give it somewhere to go. Then I can forget about the fact that we're heating, I can open the window for half an hour, however long it might be, get rid of that moisture, and I can just throughout the day be thinking, every time we're creating moisture, are we giving it somewhere to go? I promise you, this will help you if you do have mold and condensation in your home. Um, if you've got any of your own tips to share, please do, as always, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Um, but thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this video useful, and do come back very soon. Bye.